Betty. Uh, did you tell the hotel I need a board under my mattress because of my back? Yes, I did. Yeah, we also ordered sheets with pictures of Peanuts and Snoopy. <laughs> At exactly 9 o'clock Saturday morning, Ted will be driven to the Department of State for a briefing with William P. Rogers. William P. Rogers is the Secretary of State. I thought Kissinger was the Secretary of State. I thought he was President. All right, there's going to be time for questions, so, uh, Murray, I think there's been some up for Ted to ask. Yeah, she's here. Hold on. Uh, Mr. Grant, could you tell him I'll call back later? She can't talk right now. Who's calling? Tom Vernon. Uh, Hold on, she can't talk right now. Oh well, that's I'll uh, I'll take it in the other room. It's um, just an old friend. Um, I, I'm gonna be a second. Hello, Tom. You're kidding. You're in Minneapolis. Well, well, well. <laughs> Yeah, it has. It's been a long time. No, I didn't realize it had been that long. Yeah, yeah, I'm still unmarried. And you, still un as well? So how are you? Good. Me? Yes, uh, also good. I got lonely. <laughs> well, gee, uh, Tom, I, I don't know if we'll be able to get together. You see, I might uh, be going out of town uh, on a business trip, uh, Wisconsin. Well, uh, I tell you what, why don't you call me a little later and then um, I'll know for sure. Well, thank you. It was wonderful to hear yours, too. Right. And welcome to Minneapolis. Goodbye. Um, that, was, that was an old friend. Who you didn't want to see. I know the feeling. No, no, no. I, I really do want to see him. It, uh, oh, never mind. Can we get on with it now? Yes, of course. Uh, say hello. <laughs> when it moved the meeting, the least you could do is tell a guy. <laughs> Mary? Questions. Ted's supposed to ask the Secretary of State? Oh, yes, right. The questions, Marie? Well, I gave them to you, Mary. Oh, well, then they must be in here somewhere. Uh, Lou? No. I've got a perfect question, but no one there will think of. Mr. Secretary, Ted Baxter, WJM News, Minneapolis, St. Paul, tell me, sir, do you sleep naked? <laughs> huh. So the famous Tom is back, huh? When's the last time you saw him, Mayor? Two and a half years ago. Oh. Two and a half years and four letters and a postcard from Atlantic City with a picture of a diving horse. <laughs> now, just when I think I'm over him, he's... Well, I'm not going to see him, that's all. I mean, there isn't time anyway. There's, I've got all this spring cleaning to do. Yeah, I can see where you wouldn't want to pass up this kind of fun to go out with a guy you used to love. Is there anything here you think you want? Yeah, Mary, there sure is. <laughs> How about these? I meant from the box. I was afraid of that. <laughs> Listen, kid. What, what can it hurt to see him again? I mean, just once. It can hurt, Rhoda. Believe me, it can hurt. Boy, I remember once we were on this picnic. And there we were on that mountainside, sitting on the grass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? gotcha. Yeah. Gentle slope, I assume. I mean, you weren't clutching onto bushes to stay there. <laughs> right. Gentle slope. <laughs> And we were having wine and cheese and staring at the clouds, and he turned to me and he said, if I were the kind of guy who would ever get married, this is the moment I would propose. <sighs> Rhoda, it was the worst moment of my life. <laughs> oh, you Protestants. Someday, someday, Mir, I will tell you, when we're older, past caring, the worst moment of my life. You want to hear it now? <laughs> Involved my high school prom and a boiled potato. Oh, I don't know. Why don't we save that? Hey, do you want this? What is it? I don't know. That's why I'm throwing it out. Of course. Boy, today, Rhoda, when he called, I got so formal. I just, I couldn't relax. My voice sounded like Pat Nixon welcoming Eagle Scouts to the Oval Road. <laughs> hey, Mary, I've never seen this before. What is this? Oh, it's just a family photo album. Can I have it? I could leave it open in my apartment. People would think it was my life. There's pictures of Tom in there somewhere. Oh, is this him here, Mayor? 
Where? Standing right next to you, in front of this car. Yeah, that's Tom. It's a very revealing photo. Mm. He's got the same lovesick expression on his face as you do. Only he's looking at his car. <laughs> exactly. Would you like me to sum up our relationship? Saturday, we'd go out. Sunday, I'd cry. Monday, I never wanted to see him again. And by Thursday, I prayed he'd call back. Friday, he did. Saturday, we'd go out. No, no, not again. Maybe he's changed. You had to say that, didn't you? <laughs> well, Rhoda, you know what this reminds me of? A scene from Beach Blanket Bingo and we're Sandra D and Annette Funicello. <laughs> oh, Sandra, Sandra, don't take it so hard. Maybe Fabian will ask you to the hop. <laughs> I know. I mean, I'm 32 years old and I'm walking around like... Hello? Oh, hello again, Tom. Yeah, I'm sorry that I, I couldn't talk when you called earlier, but, uh... Right, <laughs> busy, busy, busy. <laughs> Uh, what's, what's that you say? No, I'm sorry. I'm afraid I can't go out tomorrow night either because as it does turn out, I will be going out of town on, on the business trip. How long uh, will you be in our fair city? Just the week. Well, then I, I guess I'll miss seeing you. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll write down your number just in case. Sure, 555-9372. Extension 2176. Right. Bye. How long will you be in our fair city? I know. Why do I talk like that? <laughs> well, at least it's over, and I'm not going to have to put myself through that again. Are you sure, kid? I'm sure. That's why I did not write down his phone number. 555-9372, five, 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 extension 2176. <laughs> you want to write that down before you forget? <laughs> Go ahead, Mayor. Why don't you call Tom? You know you want to. Yeah, you're right. I don't know what I'm making such a big deal out of it for. Hello, uh, room 2176, please. <laughs> Did you see that? Did you see the way my arm just hung up on me? <laughs> Isn't that stupid? <laughs> Maybe it knows best. Yeah. Wait, it's an arm. What did it know? <laughs> I think I've ever done anything like that before in my... Uh, hello, uh, room uh, 2176, please. <laughs> I did it again. Well, I'll tell you what. Next time, try holding the phone in your other hand. You can't trust that one. I can't believe I did that. Why did I do that? Any messages, Mary? Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Fair. Hey, you can take the rest of the day off. Why? Well, I figured maybe you'd want to see that old boyfriend of yours, Tom, while he's still in town. Murray! Lou, I told you not to say anything. Yeah. Murray, why did you tell Lou, you told you? me you wouldn't tell her. Look, Murray, if Look, I, I can't didn't say think you'd say anything, I thought it might I mean, help I don't if want he, uh... everyone in the world to know. Why wouldn't you want me to know? I'm as close to you as he is. Besides, you could trust me. If you told me, I wouldn't go blabbing it to him. <laughs> Say, Mayor, I've been going out of this itinerary, I think, as long as I'm winging it to D.C. I ought to meet the president. Uh, Ted, the junket has already been set, and nobody is going to meet the president on this trip. Here, call the White House. There is the telephone number. Ted, I can't get the president on the telephone. Of course you can, unless you're telling me you're calling for Ted Baxter. <laughs> Never has to be seen with the president of the United States. Well, even help someday if I decide to throw my hat into the fire. <laughs> you? Why not? They asked Cronkite to run for the Senate once. And I think good night and good news is a lot better than, and that's the way it is. It's ringing. Uh, hello, uh, White House? Is the president there? That's not the way to do it. Hi there. Ted Baxter, WJM TV, Minneapolis, St. Paul. I'd like to speak to the president. It's personal. It's busy? Oh, I'll, I'll hold. Okay, uh, have him call me back. Uh, tell him I'll be here for a couple of hours. Then he can call me at home at 555-8737. Uh, tell him not to call after 10 o'clock, I'll be asleep. 
When he calls, I'll be in makeup. <laughs> That's the way you call a president. Mary, you still haven't called Tom. I know. Mary, you'll want to call him. Call him. Okay. And this time, I am not hanging up. <clears throat> Room uh, 2176, please. Hi, uh, Tom. It's uh, Mary. Yeah, right, right here in Minneapolis. I, I, I didn't have to go out of town after all, and, and so I thought if you, if you weren't doing anything tonight, of course, I'm sure that you are. You aren't? Oh, that's wonderful. Fine, 8 o'clock. It's a 119 North Weatherly. It'll be good seeing you, too. Goodbye. Well, I don't know what I'm so happy about. <laughs> because I know what's going to happen to me. <laughs> Hello, Annette. It's Sandra. <laughs> Rhoda, this is just like him. He's already an hour late, and I have been ready for two hours. I mean, it's happening all over again. Here he is. I I'll call you back after. Bye. The reason I'm late is that I've been downstairs for the past 30 minutes finding out there is no great thing you can say to a woman you haven't seen in two and a half years. What do you mean? Well, I mean, how you been, isn't it? You look wonderful. That's not enough. It's good to see you again. You know, that doesn't work. And definitely not. It's been a long time. You look wonderful. It's good to see you. Well, how have you been? It's been a long time. <laughs> Now that that's out of the way, hey, I love your place. But I don't see anything from your old apartment, including your roommate. Now, I should have known you'd get better looking. You know, when you're 60, I won't be able to stand it. Hey, you sure you want to go out tonight? Oh, yes, I'm sure. I mean, sure. Yeah, I'm sure. I thought we'd just stay in and get reacquainted. Well, uh, can't we reacquaint out? Well, I guess so. I mean, but I thought we could order a pizza like the old days. I saw a place in the next block. They don't deliver. <laughs> now, Tom, I insist. You are the guest, and I am the tour guide, and Minneapolis has a terrific nightlife. All right, of course, Mary. You didn't dress up just to sit home. We'll go out and have fun. Right. But, you know, you do look wonderful. You're going to love this little restaurant I picked out. You sure that place doesn't deliver? Absolutely. Because I remember once I was giving a party, you know, it was no particular occasion. Just a bunch of us got together and... And somebody suggested we send out for pizza because the party, you know, had gone on for some time and we'd sort of run out of food. And anyway, we all got on the phone and even after we pleaded and pleaded, they still wouldn't deliver. And finally, we just trooped on down there. And so let's get going, because Minneapolis awaits. <laughs> Okay, let's go. You know, I know of this other place that does deliver. And so, Mr. and Mrs. Twin Cities, immediately following this broadcast, this reporter will be winging his way to our nation's capital. That's Washington, District of Columbia. <laughs> Parlays with our nation's leaders. A lot of hard work has been spent preparing for this trip. His mother had to sew name tapes on his underwear. <laughs> Many hours of briefings, research, and exhaustive study so that this reporter can seek out the news behind the news. He asked me if Washington was named after the president or the state. <laughs> this is Ted Baxter, your man in Washington. Saying good night and good news. Ted going to Washington. That'll teach Agnew to pick on newscasters. <laughs> Three good jokes and nothing. Tom hasn't called yet, huh? No. And he said he called me at work today. Oh, Mary, you're still at work. He could still call. Yeah, I suppose. Mary, would you run these budgets down to accounting for me? Yes, Mr. Grant. Uh, Murray, if any calls come, uh, just tell him I'm down the hall and I'll call him right back. Down the hall? No, no, just uh, 
say I'll be right back and then put them on hold. Right back. Wait, no, no, don't. Uh, just say, say just a minute and come and get me. Okay. Newsroom, Lou Grant. The budgets? Yeah, they're on their way down. Mm-hmm. Boy, it's good to be a foreign correspondent again. A week in Tijuana doesn't make you a foreign correspondent. Well, so long, Ted. Good trip. I'm gonna miss you, you big palooka. Ted, you're only gonna be gone for two days. Mary, take care of yourself, you know? Right, Ted. I'm going to really miss you guys. You don't know how much I'm going to miss you. We promise we'll ride every day. You sure you don't want to come along, Lou? No, Ted. Murray? Oh, we can't, Ted. Oh, come on. Please. We'll have a lot of fun. Just the three of us running around Washington. <laughs> Please, I don't want to go by myself. <laughs> Ted, it's going to be all right. There will be people there to take care of you. Yeah, and we'll be here if you need us. Well, I, I guess I'll be all right. Sure you will. Well, so on. Murray? No. I can't take it. <sighs> Don't be so sad, Mary. I'll only be gone for a couple of days. <laughs> Still haven't heard from Tom, huh? Nope. Hmm. Mary, something happened last night? The worst possible thing. We had a terrific time. Oh, that's a shame. At least I did. Yeah. Well, it's my fault. I should never have gone out with him. I think I know what's wrong. Mary, you haven't told Tom how you really feel about it. Yes, I have. Big mistake. <laughs> Rhoda, I don't believe that. You don't believe it. You're living it. The only guy in your life you really want, he's leaving town tomorrow. Well... There's just nothing I can do about that. Oh, Mary, there certainly is. Nobody walks away from a game when he's losing. Hey, Rhoda, listen, just so that I can continue to respect you as my closest friend, tell me you're not suggesting that I do anything as stupid as trying to make Tom jealous. Yeah, I know. You're right, kid. It's absolutely absurd. People our age is playing games. I mean, I'm sorry I even mentioned it. I'm ashamed. But it works. <laughs> Come on, Rhoda, you can't build a relationship that's going to be full and meaningful on a foundation of deceit. Sure you can. Are you expecting him? Huh? Rhoda, if it is him, promise me you'll stay. Why? Just please, it'll oh, make that's it that much easier for me. Yeah, if you I can, Mary. Promise. All right, I promise. Hi. Hi! Hi! I'm Rhoda. You've probably heard a great deal about me, and I've certainly heard a lot about you. Welcome to our fair city. <laughs> That's my friend. I'd like to meet her sometime. I thought you'd be glad to see me, aren't you? Oh, surely. Well, I know I was supposed to call you at work today, but somehow I, I just got involved, you know? Oh, really? No, I thought that I was supposed to call you. Anyway, I happen to be in the neighborhood, so I thought I'd just drop in. Well, good. That's, that's good. I'm just sorry that we won't be able to spend more time together. What do you mean? Well, I, ha I have a late date. How late? 10.30. 10.30? Well, th see, that's when he gets off work. Oh, nobody gets off work at 10.30. Uh, policemen do. He's a cop? Detective first. Oh. He's, he's not a detective first. He's, he's not a policeman, and, uh, he's not even a person. I mean, I, I don't have a date tonight. Well, why did you say you did? Do I make you do things like that, no, Mary? No, Tom, it's not you. You're not mad at me? No. Everything's okay? Yeah, fine. Good. Let's have the pizza. Okay. Oh, 
Tom, can't you even remember that I hate anchovies? I mean, look, I can take a lot, you know, but I just cannot take you walking in here with a pizza that's smothered in anchovies. I really don't think that's being too demanding of me to expect you to remember that I hate anchovies. Why do I have the crazy feeling that this isn't what you're really mad about? No, no, this is it, right there. Uh, uh, if, you, if you had to take a wild stab at something else that might be bothering you, what would it be? Nothing. Take a stab. No, I tell you a nothing. A wild stab. Our relationship. I think you got it. Tom, I'm sorry. Listen, it's, it's nothing to be mad about. I mean, you can't help it if you don't care. I don't, huh? I care. Tom, it's just so hard not knowing if I'm ever going to see you again and only knowing that when I do, you're going to leave. Sure, and in the movie of my life, Frank Sinatra will play the part, right? Well, don't tell me you really do feel badly when you leave. That's right, I do. Then how come you only wrote me four times in two and a half years? I mean, Reader's Digest wrote to me more than that. <laughs> how come you only wrote to me three times in the last two and a that half years? That is different. Oh, no, it's not. And the last two times you signed it fondly instead of love. That's because I didn't think that we were in love anymore. I thought we were more in fondness. No. I love you. I love you. So how come we're not happy about that? Because we each want different things. Now, Mary, you want a deeper relationship. You want to be wife, mistress, mother, sister, and friend. Oh, I just don't think one out of five is enough for you. You're right. One out of five isn't enough. But, um, three out of five? <laughs> but, Mary, you just end up disappointed, and I'd end, end up feeling guilty. It really is easy for you, isn't it? Oh, no, it's not easy, Mary. Boy, it's not easy. Because I know one day I'm going to call you and you're going to tell me about some other guy and that's just going to wipe me out. Oh, yes, it will. Believe me, it will. I do. I do believe you, Tom. I guess you just can't change. <laughs> but, hey, did it ever occur to you that someday... You're going to be alone? It occurred to me. Poor Tom. <laughs> Poor me. Poor us. Mary! I thought you said Ted was on his way in from the airport. Yeah, well, he must be tied up in traffic. He said he would be here by airtime. You only got a couple of minutes. You better tell Gordy to stand by to fill in. Right, I will. Hi, guys. Ted, hurry up. You've only got 30 seconds. Does anybody even say hello? Ted! All right, all right. Guys, we've gone a couple of days. I says, hello, how are you? We missed you. Here you go, Ted. Say, Mayor, that was a rotten trip. I don't want to do one of those things again. I can't believe the... <laughs> Well, at least he made it. This is Ted Baxter. I just this man returned from our nation's capital, where all went well with my talks with our nation's leaders. There was, however, one sorry exception. One nationally known political figure who steadfastly refused to see me, even when I stopped by his house. <laughs> Something to hide, Richard Nixon? <laughs> 